Bonjour. Mon nom est Richard Schnurback et je suis président du Musée de l'Holocauste, Montréal. Thank you for joining us once again to celebrate Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. Today and every day we remember the six million Jews who were murdered during the Holocaust and the legacies of survivors who transmitted their life lessons onto the next generation. One need only look to the history of our museum to see what it means to inherit survivor legacies. Founded in 1979 by young leaders of the Jewish community and Holocaust survivors, the creation of our organization was a remarkable gesture of activism in response to growing Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism. Over 40 years later, the necessity of our museum and its educational mission has only increased. This Yom HaShoah is especially memorable as it takes place in the year our museum officially announced its plans to expand and relocate to downtown Montreal. Early generous supporters like the Israeli Foundation and the government of Quebec demonstrated the widespread understanding that Holocaust and human rights education is crucial in repairing the world. As we witness a rise of anti-Semitism, racism, and discrimination against minorities, we are reminded of the transformative role of Holocaust remembrance and education for people of all ages and backgrounds. On this solemn Yom HaShoah, we mourn the millions of lives that were horrifically cut short and honor the legacies of survivors who taught us the importance of learning, feeling, remembering, and acting. On behalf of the entire museum team, I would like to thank our remarkable Yom HaShoah committee, co-chaired by Doris Stegg and Ruth Najman, and led by Esther Andor. We would also like to thank our partners, the Atlantic Jewish Council, the Calgary Jewish Federation, the Canadian Museum for Human Rights, the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21, the Newberger Holocaust Education Center, the Siegel Center, and the Vancouver Holocaust Education Center. Our efforts to realize our museum's mission would not be possible without the unwavering support of Federation CJA. On this significant and symbolic evening, I would like to express our immense gratitude to its president, Joel Siegel. Au nom du Musée de Holocaust Montréal, nous vous remercions de votre présence lors de cette commémoration de Yom HaShoah. Doris, as-tu déjà pensé à ce qu'était la vie avant la guerre? Est-ce que tu imagines les années d'avant-guerre en noir et blanc? Well, Ruth, actually, as I listened to my parents' stories of their childhood, I learned that they had joyful lives filled with family celebrations, trips, friends, sports, school, and activities with their youth movements until their worlds were shattered. As-tu déjà pensé à ce qu'ils auraient accompli s'ils avaient survécu? Yes, of course. I wonder how many would have contributed to society in many creative endeavors, professional fields, the arts, leadership, business, athletics, or raised large happy families. This evening, we will have the opportunity to listen to one individual who survived and achieved many successes. Maxwell Smart will share stories of his life before the Holocaust, his wartime experiences, and how he rebuilt his life in Canada. Tonight, we will pay respect to the many Jewish individuals whose lives were cut short. Many of these individuals were at the height of their careers and anticipated long, bright, and successful futures. They could not have predicted that their lives would be turned upside down and their legacies would be destroyed in an attempt to eradicate Jewish people and culture. Imagine people just like us, an intervention worker for Jewish immigrants and a physician. We would never have lived to complete our careers. How many of you would have survived? Lors de la récitation des noms dont les portraits apparaîtront sous vos yeux, souvenons-nous des Juifs et des Juifs issus de tous les horizons qui ont contribué à une myriade d'activités dans les sphères culturelles et civiques. We do not know if these people had surviving families to keep their memories alive. In a sense, we created the Siskir book, a book of remembrance to honor their memories. Mordechai Gebertik was an influential Jewish poet and songwriter born in 1877. 
On this 80th anniversary of his death, we are presenting a selection of his music from pre-war Poland before there was any thought of what was to come, as well as two compositions from the Krakow ghetto where he was shot by the Nazis in June 1942 at the age of 65. The songs will be performed by members of the Dora Wasserman Yiddish Theatre. Rezala is a song of courtship with a hint of youthful rebellion against traditional values. Dos Lidl von Goldenem Land is a happy memory of a mother's lullaby. The third song, Kinder Joren, reflects on the sweet years of childhood. Minuten von Betochen, a rallying song written while in the ghetto, expresses hope and confidence of the war's end. While Gehat Obir Aheim, also written in the ghetto, illustrates the Nazi invasion and destruction of Jewish life. Imagine how more he could have written. During this virtual commemoration, we invite you to imagine the world that was and the world that could have been had we not lost the gift of six million. Yehi Zichram Baruch. This song, written before the war, recounts the relationship between Rezala and Dovidel, who awaits his beloved underneath her window as he calls to her with a whistle. Steht sich dort im Gessele, still vertracht a Heisele, drinnen eufen boy dem Stibble, woint mein Teier Reisele. Jeden Oven fahren heise, dreh ich sich herum. Gebe Pfeif und ruf euf Resel, kum, kum, kum. Öffnet sich a Fenster auf, wacht euf saute Heisele. Und bald klingt in stillen Kessel, as is kolz red Resele. Noch a Weile baut mein Lieber, baut wel es sein Kai. Gesen noch a Vollmol über eins, zwei, drei. Geh ich mir a Freilecher, sing und knack mir Nisseler. Hör ich auf die Treppler springen, ihre trobne Fisseler. Schön a Hopf vom letzten Treppel, nehm du lieber um. Ich geb ihr still a Kuschenkäppel, kum, kum, kum. Will der Betten da wird los, sonst er häuft nicht bei mir. Herr, der Pfeif schon, sagt die Mama, sie ist frums, verdreht sie sehr. Pfeifen, sagt sie, ist nicht jiddisch, es passt noch bloß nach dem. Gib ein Zeichen, Prost, auf jiddisch, eins, zwei, drei. Ich will von hat nicht weiten mehr, der Reif gelieb a Schwule. Dir zu lieb wär ich a viele, wären froh mein Znule. Ich will sein, wenn du bist noch Resel, wie dein Mama frun. Jeden Schabes gern in Kleisel, kum, kum, kum. Kleb es dir, mein lieben Kerl, und der Fahr will da wieder. Strick dich a schön twillen Säckel mit a Morgen da wieder. Wenn gefällen Zwett in Kleisel, sorgen sollst du sehen. Schott gestrickt, mein lieber Resel, eins, zwei, drei. Dank war dein Matonnele, lieber soi die Resele. Lieb dein Mamen, lieb das Gessel, lieb das alte Heisele. Lieb die Stehn nach Leben heiß und fest euch sie herum. Hört dein Mame, ruft schon Resel, komm, komm, komm. Geh ich mir a Freilecher, sing und knack mir Nisseler. Hör ich euf die Treppler läufen, ihre drobne Fisseler. Wieder steht Vertrag das Heisel, Skessel wieder stumm. Komm zu mir in hollem Reisel, komm, komm, komm. Hello, I'm Joel Siegel, President of Federation CJA, and it's an honor to address you as part of Montreal's Yom HaShoah commemoration. 
I want to begin by expressing my deep gratitude to our survivors. Although I have no direct family connection to the Holocaust, I live in awe of what these survivors have contributed to our city, province, and country. So many of you face unspeakable horrors and yet were able to start anew here in Montreal, raising families, building careers, and giving back generously. You are pillars of our community, the very embodiment of resilience. In 2015, I participated in the adult delegation of the March of the Living, a life-altering experience even as an adult. Our superb guide, Tzvi Sperber, guiding message mirrors this year's theme of the Yom HaShoah commemoration. Svi instructed us to not just think about the incredible human tragedy and loss, but to understand and know the long history of vibrant communities that existed in Europe for over a thousand years, the great writers, thinkers, rabbis, yeshivas, and artists. At each stop we made, he made sure that we were aware of the great communities that thrived in these places before he got to the horrific details about how abruptly and brutally it all ended. We traveled with survivor Stephen Hopman, Zichrono Livracha. His testimonials, as others, can be seen on the Montreal Holocaust Museum website. At one particularly difficult stop, we were invited to go to a quiet place and write down our thoughts. Overwhelmed by the stories we had heard, I started crying. Steve found me and put his arms around me. I remember thinking how brave he was traveling back in time to these places where he personally experienced man's inhumanity to man. From Poland, we traveled to Israel to be reminded that out of extreme darkness and evil, some light can emerge, and we celebrated the miracle of Israel. We had a party the evening of Yom Hatzma'ud on the top floor of the Israeli towers, and Stephen was dancing with a big smile. I marveled how joyous he could be given all that he'd experienced, and he said, look, gazing out at the Tel Aviv skyline. Look at all we created. March of the Living Experiences will restart soon after a two year pause. These trips and the work of the Montreal Holocaust Museum are so important today as we see the ugly rise of anti-Semitism, even here in our own backyard. Federation CJA and its partners reaffirm our commitment and obligation to preserve and transmit the memory of the Shoah to future generations and Federation, CJA, and its affiliated agencies will continue to provide assistance and care to thousands of our survivors, ensuring that they can live out the rest of their lives in dignity, remaining independent, active, and connected to the community. We are here to support our survivors, indeed our entire community, as we finally start to emerge from these last two difficult years. To our survivors and their families, on behalf of the Montreal Jewish community, I wish you good health and happiness. And thank you to the organizers of this important annual commemoration. Merci et bonne soirée. Chers survivants et vos familles, nous manquons aujourd'hui la journée commémorative pour les victimes de l'Holocaust, Yom HaShoah. The Holocaust is behind us. There are few witnesses or survivors left to share their testimony, but the memory, their memory, will accompany us always. 80 years ago, Jews were defenseless, suffered discrimination and persecution, which led to the murder of millions of us in the Shoah. For them, the state of Israel gained sovereignty too late. For survivors and Jews everywhere, Israel is today a homeland, a place of safety where we can live in freedom and blossom. The amount of talent lost in the Holocaust, history's ultimate genocide, is unfathomable. But Israel of 2022 and Jewish communities here in Montreal and across the globe is a different story. When you put pressure on a glass, it cracks and breaks. That is called fragile. The opposite is not that one puts pressure on a glass and it doesn't crush resilient, resistant, or strong. The opposite is when you put pressure on something and it flourishes. No pressure, no diamond. Israel of 2022 and our Jewish communities around the world is back and is today increasingly at the fore. We're at the fore of technology, 
but we're also at the fore of the NGO world, humanitarian and development aid. We're seeing emerging signs of our taking a place at the table of international affairs, as Israel and the Arab world publicly nurture partnerships, and others ask for our involvement. Jewish talent lost was one of history's greatest tragedies. The talent emerging is perhaps the most exciting story of the 21st century. Israel and our Jewish communities across the globe is the diamond of 2022. Anti-Semitism is still widespread, also here in Canada. Montreal, where many survivors found a home, is no exception. We will defeat hate every time. Hatred will never again rob the world of Jewish talent. Merci à tous. Todaraba. This pre-war song is a heartfelt testament of the singer's loving mother, long gone, who used to sing the song from the Golden Land as she prepared her son's cradle and rocked him to sleep. Tell Klesmel, dein Fiedel in Hand, und spiel mir das Liedel fu golden im Land. Am Moll fleckt mein Mame mit Hals und Gefühl, das Liedel mir singen, oi spiel es mir spiel. Am Moll fleckt mein Mame mit Hals und Gefühl. Das Liedel mir singen, euch spiel es mir spiel. Nun hör ich das Liedel, dein Schwert bald mir bald. Mein Tagere Mame, ihr lieblich Gestalt. Ihr halzige Schmeichel, ihr zärtlicher Blick. Sei weg in mir, euch mein vergangenen Blick. Ihr Halsiker Schmichel, ihr zeltlicher Blick. Sei weg in mir, euch mein vergangenen Blick. Nun hör ich das Lied, der seh ich und steh. Mame, sie macht mir mein Wiegele Gret und ich will euch mein Stirn in der linken Hand. Sie singt mir das Lied auf und Gold in dem Land und ich will euch mein Stirn in der linken Hand. Sie singt mir das Lied auf und Gold in dem Land. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with me, Mr. Mr. Smart, for Yom HaShoah. It's very special. Your story is very, very special. It's the story of a child, a 
child with a beautiful soul, a child who was hunted and hounded like an animal, and who somehow faced unfathomable loss and survived and, 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 and thrived. Tell us about the circumstance, when you were born and where you were born. I was born in June the 1st, 1930. And when you were young, your family moved back from moved Czechoslovakia back to, to, yeah. to, Buchach. to Buchach. And uh, tell me a little bit about your family. The family was, my mother comes from quite a religious family. A religious family. My father, they are, he was religious well, well, he was a learned, I wasn't a rabbi, but he was a learned Jewish man. He came from a different city, not Buchach. He comes from Chortko. He, he was more modern. He was more easy. My mother's father had a long beard. His father didn't have a beard. He didn't have a beard. So he was more modern. I was brought up not being too religious, but Jewish background. Well, Ed, uh, what was the family's occupation? My father's occupation was he had a store, a clothing store, business of manufacturing clothing. Sure, so it was a pro prosperous family. You, your parents had two children. So it was you and your little sister. And my sister, Sonia. Sonia, yeah. Describe for us a traditional Shabbat with your family in Buchach. Shabbat was a very beautiful. Friday, everybody closed the stores. They came home early. The, the Shabbat that I remember is when my grandfather, with the beard, the religious grandfather, used to come for Shabbat to us. My mother used to set the table with a white tablecloth. She said that with a candelabra, she, she, gave, she got a gift from, for their wedding when she got married. <clears throat> from her father and mother. It's a beautiful five-arm candelabra. I still have it. That's the only, only, only item that I have from my home is this particular candelabra. The cooking on Friday night was unbelievably beautiful. The smell in the house, the, 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 the preparation for the, for, for, for Shabbat. The, when the Shabbat came, we, we were washed. We put in our clothing. My mother calmed me. I remember my father took me to the synagogue. We belonged to the, we belonged to the great synagogue of Buchach. That was not the most religious, but my, my grandfather didn't want to belong there. It was not good enough for him. But this synagogue was very, very modern, beautifully built with chandeliers, with, with the, the umet was covered with sterling silver, leathering, uh, tall windows. And the biggest and the happiest time is when my father used to put in the towels and they brought me over <clears throat> to recite the, 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 the prayer over the, 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 the Torah. It was very, that was my happiest time. Tell us about, a little bit about your schooling. I went to a private school, Polish school. It was quite a, it was strictly a boys' Polish school. My friends were Polish. They were Jewish friends. In Poland, you went on Saturday to school. I did go on Saturday, even though it was considered a holiday. Antisemitism in school was also quite obvious. We did we were not treated nicely, but 
fairly. We could live with it. It was no problem. My friends were Jewish. My friends were Polish, Ukrainian. We had always meet. We played, we played games. We were always happy. So we're sitting in this uh, amazing gallery, which we will talk about later on. Uh, everything here has been created by you. And so I know from your book that there were two separate occasions in your childhood when it was pointed out to you that you had a gift. Can you tell us about that? I remember the teacher bringing out a book. He said, children, today you were going to draw a book. I, f I figured I'll draw the book the way I feel it. My book, when she picked up the book, my book was three-dimensional. The book that I pr probably, in my vision, I was looking at my grandfather's Bible. I was looking in, in my books in the house. So the vision of my book was what I saw after I handed over the paper to the teacher. And she looked at it. She got up from the seat. She was holding it in her hand. And she's showing it to the kids, children. You see, children, this is how you paint a book. I came home. I was very happy, seven or eight-year-old child. I told the mother. She met my mother, and she said, you know, he has talent. I think you should do something about it. They went to, to definitely to my uncle, Uncle uh, Zygmunt. He agreed, and, but the war started. In this song, Gebirte grieves his fleeting childhood, now long gone, the loss of a mother he loved so dearly, and of the beautiful Fegele he adored. Der 
washed up new stocking fleck Fake eyes are a wreck Oh, if I schnell bin ich schon alt Gewonnen But it didn't take long, maybe a week or two, maybe a month. There was an announcement that people between 18 and 45 or 50 should go and register in the city for work. My father got up, he went over to register. And most of the city people went. I think there were about 600 historically that, that I found out in later years. There were about 600 of the best and the finest people of Mozart. <clears throat> they divided them in groups, the laborers, the tradesmen, separately, the lawyers, doctors, and the intelligentsia to another, which were about 400 or 350, I don't know exactly. They let those go, the laborers go, <clears throat> and they have loaded up without waiting or without announcing or without arresting them. They just load them up on the trucks. They took them away. In fact, years later, we found out that they were killed the same day on the Feather Hill and buried in a mass grave. Please tell us what happened with your mother and your little sister. They have decided that the Jews of the city and butchers should live in a ghetto. There was no food, no, 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 no. No sanitation, no doctors, no help, and no connection with the outside of the city. You couldn't get out of the ghetto. The last time my mother, I saw my mother, there was a raid in the ghetto. They put us to jail. They kept us there for two days. No food, no sanitation. My mother was talking to me, but out a stop for maybe two days. Remember, you have to help yourself in escape. You can't go with us. You, you, you have to try. When we go outside, you have to run away. The next day, they opened the, the doors. They told us to get out. I'm walking with my mother. She says, run away. I took off my armband and I just walked away. I walked out from the compound surrounded by the police and I walked out on the bridge. You survived because you were incredibly resourceful and brave, but you couldn't have survived without some, without some help. Please tell us about Yashko and, and Kasia, the Polish couple who helped you. My auntie said to me, you cannot stay in the city anymore because they have declared the city Juden free. That means no Jews are in the city or the dead or the gone. But she was in the city. She was considered an essential, like today, of the COVID business. Why was she essential? Because her husband was the only manufacturer of candies and chocolates, and they needed him for to have something that they won, and they kept him. He didn't live in the, in the compound of the ghetto. He lived outside in the factory. He was a good big help. He couldn't help me save my mother for other reasons. 
So they arranged for me to go into hiding. And this is how I encountered the farmer. His name is Yashko Rudnitsky. He was a young man, fairly good looking. He was married to a beautiful little girl. Her name was Kasha. They had two children. They kept me in the house. I was doing work as a helper. I kept, I, I kept the barn with the hay. I kept the, the, the cows. The, I cleaned the manure. I cut the, the food for them. I made butter from the milk that she collected. I did the chores that required for a, for a farmer's boy. They dressed me up in, a, in a, their own clothing. I had, I looked and, and felt and, and talked like they did, and I was part of their life. One time there was a raid by the Ukrainian police and you were incredibly, incredibly quick-witted that time. I was in the house. I don't know what kind of chores I was doing that time. But when I looked out, I didn't look out in the window. I didn't see anything. But I heard a knock on the door. And Yashko opened the door. They called them outside, and I heard, Yashko Rodnitsky, we were informed that you're hiding Jews. If you would tell us where they are, nothing will happen to you. But if you won't tell us, we will check and we will find them. We will kill them, we will kill you, we will kill your family, and we will kill your children. And Yashko says, I am not hiding any Jews, and you could look, and you could look for yourself. They walked into the house, me knowing that I'm Jewish, not that I look Jewish, because I was not dressed Jewish. I grabbed the first baby. They were a little two-year-old, and I would think a three-year-old or two and a half and three and a half. I take the boy and take him in my arms and hold him. They come in, they look around. The furniture consisted of one bed, a children's not bed, a bench that opened up as a bed, and a stove open and a table. One window and one door, the whole house. They look at me. I help him move a table. I help, I help him push it in. They, they walk out. But when the police went away, immediately Yashko realized that he made a very big mistake. And the police went away. He said, you cannot stay here anymore. You have to get out and went to go to the woods. Without clothing, without having anything, I walked into the woods. Talk about that time in your life when you were very hungry. You try to survive, but the hunger that you have, the pain of hunger, you cannot get out of your mind. How do you survive hunger? I always had what to eat. All the time. There was not one minute in the time of my existence and not eating that I didn't have what to eat. I had a slice of bread. It could last me for a week. One slice. If you take a crumb, one single crumb, and put it in your mind and taste it, you already ate. Talk about the loneliness of being all alone. You could handle 
hunger because I managed. I managed with cold. But how do you manage not to talk? How do you manage to be alone for months, not a day, not two days, sentenced to be alone? You have to find things to do. You have to find, you have to create something to live. You have to, you have to do on your own something not to go crazy. The easiest for a while was to yell at God. And I created myself a happy dream. I'm free in the sky. I used to be able to go endlessly to each single star, each single light and freedom and fly. I saw the birds flying. Why can't I? And I was flying with them. I was part of the nature and I became a part of the woods and I started to live a life of, of the inhabitant of the woods. I didn't wash myself. I didn't change my clothing. I drank water like an animal with my hands. I slept in mud and in, in, in did not even straw with leaves that were dead already from the last year. I had nothing, but I did have the freedom of the world. It belonged to me and it was my freedom. When I used to lie, I used to dream and I used to paint. And once in a while, once a month, I went to Yashko. He gave me, Yashko was nice to me. He gave me sometimes a couple of potatoes. Sometimes he gave me a bag of flour. Flour, corn flour was very important because corn flour, when you cook it, it becomes thick, like a malika. Like malika. A, like malik. Cornmeal. And, yeah. Polenta. Pa pa polenta. It becomes, and the colder it is, the polenta is harder, and it becomes like bread. I could have had a pot, but with one handful, I could have lived one week. I found out that poison ivory is edible. <laughs> it's edible, it's not poison. They say, Poison ivy is not poison, it's edible. I found out mushrooms are edible, but they're poisonous. But mushrooms that go on trees, those big mushrooms that the tree creates, the, the, the fungus of the tree is edible. Berries are edible. I used to have all that stuff, and I could survive. Now we go back to, to Yannick. Tell us about him and what happened to him. Did God send me Yannick? Maybe. Because he stayed, just think about it. He stayed with you maybe six, seven months. What would I have done six, seven months alone? I was already alone a couple of months and I was going crazy. And I had to, I build my own life, my own, uh, uh, not, a, uh, uh, not a life, but a, a dream. I build a dream without him. I would have not, I can't continue, a dream doesn't last forever. And Yannick brought me back to life. Yes. I helped him. Yes, I took care of him. Yes, I became his father. But it gave me something that I want to do because I couldn't do without him. I felt guilty that he died. Yannick died very, very tragically. And you parted with him at this point. After Yannick's death, Yashko, came, went with me to
to the bunker. Where you had been hiding, the place that you had built for yourself in the ground. Yeah, went to the bunker. He went inside in the bunker because I didn't believe Yannick is dead. And he verified, and he says, Yannick died. What should I do? He says, you can't do very much. He closed the bunker permanently and let Yannick lying in the bunker. Maybe, maybe a month later, the, the Germans retreated. Yashko came in. He says, you know, he says, the Germans are gone. You don't have to hide anymore. If you want to, I could take you back to the city. I said, Yashko, if you take me back to the city and anybody who is alive, if I find anybody for my family, they'll reward you for what you did for me. We came at maybe two miles, two kilometers, from Buchach, I see the, the Russians are retreating. We stopped. I went down, I see people walking behind the, the, the wagons with the Russian soldiers. I said, what's happening? We are retreating from Buchach because the Germans are reoccupying Buchach. And we, we decided to go with the, with the Russians. I go over to Yashko and I say, Yashko, what should I do? Come with me back. You'll stay with me until everything is settled. And then you could go back. I'll take you back. I can't go back to hiding. I have, I'm going to go with the Russians. I'm going to go with them even with whatever there is. I will not go to hiding anymore. I hide it long enough. I want to be free. I want to walk with them. I'll rather walk with them. And they said goodbye to me. Benjamin Fordana, born in Yash, Romania, murdered in Auschwitz, Poland at the age of 45. Bronislaw Czech, born in Zakopane, Poland, murdered in Auschwitz, Poland at the age of 36. Ernst Julius Cohen, born in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, murdered in Auschwitz, Poland at the age of 74. Francesca Mann, born in Warsaw, Poland, murdered in Auschwitz, Poland at the age of 26. Janusz Korzak, born in Warsaw, Poland, murdered in Treblinka at the age of 64. Charlotte Salomon, née à Berlin, en Allemagne, assassinée à Auschwitz, en Pologne, à l'âge de 26 ans. Yitak Katnelson, né à Kalalichi, dans l'Empire russe, assassiné à Auschwitz, en Pologne, à l'âge de 57 ans. Victor Perez, né à Tunis, en Tunisie, assassiné à Greiswitz, en Pologne, à l'âge de 33 ans. Irène Nemirovski, née à Kiev, dans l'Empire russe, assassinée à Auschwitz, en Pologne, à l'âge de 39 ans. Elvin Schorhoff, née à Prague, en Autriche-Hongrie, mort dans la prison de Würzburg, en Allemagne, à l'âge de 48 ans. Emmanuel Ringelblum, born in Buchach, Austria-Hungary, executed in the Paviak prison in Warsaw, Poland at the age of 44. Anne Frank, born in Frankfurt, Germany, murdered in Bergen-Belsen at the age of 15. Bedshi Frita, born in Wisniewa, Austria-Hungary, murdered in Auschwitz, Poland at the age of 38. Alma Maria Rose, born in Wisniewa, Austria-Hungary, murdered in Auschwitz, Poland 
at the age of 38. Menachem Zimba, born in Warsaw, Poland, shot during the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising at the age of 59. Mordechai Gebertig, born in Krakow, Austria, Hungary, shot in the Krakow ghetto at the age of 65. Judith Oer, born in Zurich, Switzerland, hanged in Plutzenzi prison in Berlin, Germany at the age of 39. Attila Pechoer, born in Budapest, Hungary, murdered in Davidovka, Ukraine at the age of 38. Hanna Senesh, born in Budapest, Hungary, executed in Hungary at the age of 23. Gershon Siroda, born in the Russian Empire, murdered in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising at the age of 69. This song, also written in the ghetto, reflects courage and confidence. The singer urges the inhabitants to remain joyful predicting the imminent end of the war and reminding them that confidence and patience are the weapons of the Jewish people. Jeden soll sein Freilach scheunet lang ich hoff sagt bald die Milchome es kommt bald sehr soff Freilich noch nicht sorgen und nicht darum geht trieb hat Geduld betachen und nimmt als und verlieb und nimmt als und verlieb. Ei, ei, hat betachen, nimmt als und verlieb. Ei, 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 ei. Nur Geduld betachen, nicht los da reus von Hand. Unser alt Kleisain, was halt uns gar beinand. Hol je tanzt ha Jani, im Scheunet lang ich hoff. Gewinn am alle haben, es wart euf euch sein Sof. Es wart euf euch sein Sof. Ei, ei, gewinn am haben, es wart euf euch sein Sof. Ei, 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 ei. Waschen soll sein Waschen, keins reut der Fleck. Heves Blut von Herzen, was wascht sich nicht da weg. Treibt uns von die Diere, schneid uns ab die Bärd. Jeden soll sein Freilach, wir haben sehen dreht, wir haben sehen dreht. Ei, ei, soll sein Freilach, wir haben sehen dreht. When I left Yashko and I walked with the, for the with the Russians in the back truck, we encountered all kind of bad things. I mean, the the the. the Planes came down. They were killing uh, people on the streets. We were we were all practically dead, from the from the people that run with the Germans with the Russians, away from the Germans. Fifty percent of them died. We came to a compound where the soldiers got together. They had the big tents. They have uh, they have uh, uh, trucks with kitchens attached with horses, buggies, horses, field kitchens, with food. In, in my entire life, before the war, I never saw so much food. I went over to one of the places that, that they gave food to the soldiers. Could I get some food? He looks at me. Do you have a cantina? I says, Cantina, what's a cantina? Do you have a, a pot to put? No. 
Who are you? I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew and I'm alone. I've just got liberated. How old are you? I may be maybe 14 years old, 15. Wait a minute, he says. Sit here, I'll give you, I'll give you some food. Let me finish off those people. I go behind the tent. I wait for him. Maybe a half an hour, 15 minutes later, he comes out, brings him the cantina, come. He fills me up the cantina with meat, with soup. He gives me a spoon. He says, finish. I want to introduce you to, to the captain. I've never ate so much in my entire life. I never had so much food. He brings me into the captain. He says, he's a Jewish boy, something for little soldiers. He dressed me up. I was clean, beautiful, like I didn't wash. I was filthy. You couldn't wash me. It, it was filthy from two years not washing myself. I was not dirty. I was gray from, from the hunger, the skin. My skin was not a, a skin with blood running. I don't know what was running. Everything was brown. Everything. I didn't look human. He cleans me up, brings me back. Now, he says, you look like a, a little soldier. I was so happy. The captain took me. He took me to his quarters. He lived in a, in a, in a, in a house there. Go and take a shower. I walk into the bathroom. White things, white towels on the walls, warm water canning, soap on the, on the dish towel. This is not possible. One hour before, I think, I saw Yashku, and I, I didn't see myself. But when I saw Yashku, I said, I probably looked like Yannick, because Yannick torn, broken up, undernourished, long hair, dirty, filthy, nails long, a half a mile, a half an inch nails. How do you break nails? How do you, how do you clean yourself? Everything is growing in you. He says, stay with me for a few days. So I stayed with him, with the captain. He says, you know, it's very dangerous here. I'm going to send you in deeper to, to Romania. To, to Bucharest. Where you directed yourself in the direction of, of Romania, and then Hungary, and then Austria, and then Italy. And uh, you were in many ways having a very good time uh, landing on your feet, being extremely resourceful, uh, almost like a man of the world, but you were a kid. Imagine a kid without rules. He could do whatever he wants to do. You arrived in Montreal in 1948 at the age of 18 under the Orphans Program sponsored by the Canadian Jewish Congress. I landed up in G. Manson, Montreal, on the, on the little old age home, and I was ready for adoption. You, were, you really, I think, were dreaming of being adopted by a Canadian Jewish family. You were hopeful of getting yourself an education in art because you still wanted very much to be an artist. But I think you got a very cold welcome in, 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 in Canada. There were people that they were interested in the, in the Congress, tried. They tried hard. They accommodated me. They gave me $18 a week. As soon as I made my own $18 a week, they took it away. They tried to find an adoption, somebody, but they couldn't. I see uh, a line through your life which is uh, powered by creativity. You were creative right from the get-go. You had a talent for art. Then you had a talent for making yourself a, a home out of nothing in the woods. Afterwards, you became incredibly creative on the black market. 
And then when you came here to Canada, you reinvented yourself as a businessman over and over again. I had no choices. I, I was limited to choices. My choice, first choice was education. I joined the Y. From the Y, they had art in the Y. I took, I took the art lessons. In the Y, they had school, English. I took the school lessons. In the Y, they had business. And I, I took business lessons. I took whatever I could absorb. I was totally abandoned from the age of 11. But I was resourceful. I had, I was working as a shipper. I was working as, as a truck driver. I was working as a furrier. I was, I was anything possibly to find something that I want to do. I had a store. I, I had, I had, I was manufacturing. My willpower was to make art the most important item of my life. Art was an escape for me. I, I escaped into art to forget. I escaped to the art. In, in art, I was rich. I was beautiful. Everything that I, that I did in art was always perfection. My art reflects my past. This art is not just I, I, art. This all is, is my memory of the past. The hiding, the sky, the happiness. Some art is not happy. Some art is, is sad. Some of my art is, 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 is a dream of survival in the woods, the survival, the hiding, the, the, the freedom. I paint freedom and I feel good about it. Thank you so much for doing this interview today. Thank you very, very much. It, again, I just want to emphasize how we're surrounded by these beautiful paintings that you create and that the book is about a very dark page of history, but that the book is actually shot through with light. It is a beautiful book. These are wonderful, wonderful works by Mr. Smart, and we are surrounded by his beautiful art here. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The song laments the sudden and violent uprooting by the Nazis of the singer's family from their modest home. A home that had been a life force filled with friends and music. Ich bin stolz mit Weib 
הנאצים ועוזריהם יימח שמם ביערות ובגטאות ובמחנות בעבור שאנו מתפללים לעילוי נשמותיהם בעל הרחמים יסתירם בסתר כנפיו לעולמים וייצר אור בצרו החיים את נשמותיהם אדוני הוא נחלתם וינוח בשלום על משכבם ונאמר אמן. זוג נתקן מול הזדו גייסטם לצטן ו... Himmel blei verstellen blei 
Kommen wird noch unser ruhiges Gebänkte schon. Sweat hat beugt euch unser Trott mir seinen Do. Kommen wird noch unser ruhiges Gebänkte schon. Sweat hat beugt euch unser Trott mir seinen Do. Von Grün am Palmenland bis weißen Land von Schnee. Wir kommen on mit unser Pein, mit unser Weh. Und wo gefallen sie ist der Spritz von unser Blut? Spotzen wird dort unser Gwore, unser Mut. Und wo gefallen sie ist der Spritz von unser Blut? Spotzen wird dort unser Gwore, unser Mut. Es wird die Morgensun bagilden uns dem Heint. Und der Nachten wird verschwinden mit dem Feind. Nur heut versamen wird die Sonne in dem Kajo. Wer Parol soll gehen das Lied von dort zu dort. Nur heut versamen wird die Sonne in dem Kajo. Wer Parol soll gehen das Lied von dort zu dort. Das Lied geschrieben ist mit Blut und nicht mit Leib. Es ist nicht kein Liedl von der Feugel, ruf der Frei. Das hat der Volk zwischen Fallen dick erwähnt. Das Lied gesungen mit einer Garnis in die Hand. Das hat der Volk zwischen Fallen dick erwähnt. Das Lied gesungen mit einer Garnis in die Hand. Du sollst mit dem Wohl, als du gehst im letzten Weg. Trotz Himmel bleiben auf Verstellen bleue Teg. Kommen wird noch unser Reusgebänkte schon. Das Wetter beugt euch und unser Trott mir seinen Tod. Kommen wird noch unser Reusgebänkte schon. Das Wetter beugt euch und unser Trott mir seinen Tod. Mir seinen Tod. Miz Marli David Adunai Miyagur Borlecha, Miyishkon Bahar Kachecha, Holech Tamim Ufoel Tzedek, Udover Emet Bilvavo, Le Rogal Alishono, Lo Asa Lere Ehu Ra'a, Vecherpa, Lo Nasa Al Krovo, Nivza Beinav, Nimas, Ve Es Yere Adunai Chabed Nishba Le Harav Le Yamir, Kaspo, Ve Lo Natan, Beneshech Vishochad, Al naki lo lakach, o se ele lo yumot liolam. A song by David. God, who is worthy, who may dwell in your tents, who may dwell upon the holy mountain, it is he who walks with complete integrity, who does acts of righteousness, who speaks the same truth in his heart without a deceiving tongue. He does not have gossip on his tongue, even if it is the truth. He has done no evil to his fellow man, and he has not brought disgrace upon his close ones. A despicable person who intentionally sins is abhorrent in his eyes, and he honors those who fear God. He makes an oath, and even if it is to his own detriment. Today, we once again remember to never forget. Now let us recite together the Kaddish for all the people that were murdered in the Holocaust. Yit Kadal, the Yit Kadash, Shmei Rabba, the Olma Divra Hirute, the Amlich Mahote. Bechai echon, uvyom echon, uvchai edecho beit Yisrael. Vagala, uvizman kariv, diemru amen. Yehei shmei rabba, mevorach leolam ulol mei almaya. Yit barach, viyishtabach, viyit paar, viyit romam, viyit nasei. Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Alal, Shmei de Kutsha, Brichu. Le Ela Mikol Bichata, 
ושירתה, תוש בחטא ונחמתה, דמירון בעלמה, ויאמרו אמן. יהי שלום הרבה משמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ויאמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, ויעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ויאמרו אמן.